As President Trump was leaving Singapore, I talked with him aboard Air Force One about the summit and what's next. That summit was highly produced and choreographed down to a very specific pitch meant to appeal to the movie-loving, pop culture-obsessed Kim Jong-un. We will solve the big problem, the big dilemma that until this point has been unable to be solved. After the pool cameras left the bilateral meeting, President Trump and his team pulled out an iPad to show the North Korean dictator and his team a highly produced four-minute video put together by the National Security Council. Destiny Pictures presents a story of opportunity, a new story, a new beginning, one of peace, two men, two leaders, one destiny, a story about a special moment in time when a man is presented with one chance that may never be repeated. What will he choose to show vision and leadership? or not. There can only be two results. One of moving back. Or one of moving forward. The slick movie trailer was then shown to a packed news conference. I hope you liked it. I thought it was good. I showed it to him today, actually during the meeting, toward the end of the meeting. And I think he loved it. About eight of their representatives were watching it, and I thought they were fascinated by it. I thought it was well done. The president then spent more than an hour answering journalist questions, more than three dozen of them even mentioning the specific real estate pitch he used with Kim Jong-un. They have great beaches. You see that whenever they're exploding their cannons into the ocean, right? If I said, boy, look at that. Wouldn't that make a great condo behind? And I explained, I said, you know, instead of doing that, you could have the best hotels in the world right there. Think of it from a real estate perspective. From the press conference on Sentosa Island, a 20-minute motorcade to an airbase in Singapore to board his ride home. Air Force One. Thanks for the time. What is this, 26 hours? 20, I'm now on my 26th. We've been negotiating <laughs> with some very good negotiators. Yeah. <laughs> nice to be with you. Thank you for having us. But you took every question in the news conference. Well, I took a lot of them, and we had a lot of reporters. I don't know if you saw that room, but the credentials were like record kind of numbers. And I took as many as I could. People are really happy about it, even... I would say non-Trump fans, that people are really happy. Uh, it, it's something that I'm very proud of. Now, with that being said, I want to get it done. But I believe that Chairman Kim wants to get it done. You do. I mean, I do. there was one part of the news conference, I think you were kind of joking, that six months from now you could say, this was a mistake oh, and sure. I'm never no, going to tell you joking. that. I could happen. I mean, all of a sudden. But you don't believe that. It's deals, whether it's this, and you're, which is so important, or buying a building or doing whatever you may be doing. No, I don't think that's going to happen. But I said, you know, I only consider it successful if it gets done. I think we've done something very historic already in one way, but to me, a success is when it gets done. Is the military drawing down um, in South Korea? You kind of hinted at that. Um, and is there going to be this kind of tit for tat? No, it's not drawing down at all. In fact, honestly, it was never discussed. I'm sure he'd like that. It was never on the table. We, you know, when, when I met him today, we have a very good relationship, I feel. I feel it's good. You know, we know when we have chemistry. You know it as well as anybody, and you understand what I mean. Uh, but when I met him today, we had done three months, almost four months worth of work prior to my meeting. So we sort of understood that was never on the table. With that being understood, and, and you know, you ask me a question like that, I would love to get the military out as soon as we can, because it costs a lot of money, a lot of money for us. We don't get paid fully for that military, which... You know, I'll be talking to South Korea about, but uh, we have 32,000 soldiers in South Korea. I'd like to get them home. 
I would like to, but it is not on the table right now. At the appropriate time, it will be. But do you think China looks at this and says, well, this is kind of what we want? North Korea that's under control, a U.S. that's maybe disengaging from the region? No, I think China really would like to see no nuclear weapons, you want to know the truth. Because, look, whether you're semi-friendly with a nation or not, when they have nuclear weapons and you're that close, it can't be a positive feeling. It just can't be. So China's been very helpful. I think over the last two months, maybe less so, I think the border got a little bit more open. Now, it didn't affect today's negotiation, but I think the border opened up a little bit more because China could be a little bit upset about trade because we're very strongly clamping down on trade. How strong? Well, I think very strongly. I mean, you'll see over the next couple of weeks. We've, they understand what we're doing. With that being said, I have a very good relationship with President Xi of China. He's, you know, an incredible guy. They just, you know, essentially president for life. That's yeah. pretty good. So North Korea, you know, they've agreed to things before. They've agreed to several things before. Yeah, but that's with a different president, and nobody's taken it this far, and presidents have never met with anybody from North Korea. It's been, you know, delegated to other people. And even if they did meet, they wouldn't have been able to pull it off. But this is something that should have been done years ago. I mean, you've heard me say it many times. This should have been done 10 years, 15, 20 years ago. This shouldn't be done now where they have an arsenal of nuclear weapons. This should have never allowed to get to this point. With that being said, Chairman Kim wants to resolve the problem because he knew that we weren't playing around, I wasn't playing around. He's not playing around. We have a very... I really say for, you know, for a fairly short-term relationship because it was unbelievably hostile, the rhetoric. Rhetorically, it was unbelievably hostile. And I think we have a very good relationship. We understand each other. You know, you were asked in the press conference a number of different times and different ways about human rights. And, you know, that you called this relationship really good and that he was a very talented person. You know, you call people sometimes killers. He, you know, he is a killer. I mean, he, he's clearly well, he's a, executing he's people. He's a tough and, guy. Hey, when you take over a country, tough country, with tough people, and you take it over from your father, I don't care who you are, what you are, how much of an advantage you have. If you can do that at 27 years old, you, I mean, that's one in 10,000 that could do that. So he's a very smart guy. He's a great negotiator. But I think we understand each other. But I mean, he's still some, done some really bad things. Yeah, but so have a lot of other people done some really bad things. I mean, I could go through a lot of nations where a lot of bad things were done. Now, look, with all of that being said, the answer is yes. I'm going from today. I'm going from maybe 90 days ago, because we really started this. We got a call that he was going to the Olympics. He would like to go to the Olympics. And that was sort of the beginning of what we have right now. And we're very far down the line. You saw the agreement. Nobody thought we were going to have an agreement like that. And things were given to me, as you know from the news conference, things were given to me, Brett, that were not even part of the agreement. I got them after we had signed the agreement. And so verification, you're confident you can set up the I'm system? I'm totally confident. And if we can't, we can't have a deal. I mean, we have to be, you know, it has to be verified. But one of the things that really I'm happy is that the soldiers that died in Korea, their remains are going to be coming back home. And we have thousands of people that have asked for that. Thousands and thousands of people. So many people asked when I was on the campaign, I'd say, wait a minute, I don't have any relationship. But they said, when you can, President, we'd love our son to be brought back home. You know, the remains. And I asked, we, we had pretty much finished, and I said, would you do me a favor? The remains of, of these great fallen heroes, uh, could we do something? He agreed to it immediately. It's pretty great. Why do you think Kim raced to complete his nuclear program and then decided to give it up? I think psychologically he felt it was important, and I understand that. But again, this should not have been happening now. This should have happened years ago. And, and I'm not blaming President Obama. I'm saying during Obama, during Bush, during Clinton, this should have happened. Clinton got played. I mean, when you look at what happened, he gave billions of dollars, and it was like just a total waste of money. So does this summit thing, you seem like you like it, and interacting with these world leaders. G7 got a little rocky, um, well, and there was a question about that. You left the G7 summit a few days ago in Canada, having determined that Prime Minister Trudeau is weak uh, and dishonest. What do you say to America's allies who worry that you might be jeopardizing our long-term alliances and who worry 
that you might be treating our historic friends as enemies and our historic enemies as friends. I had a very good meeting with the G7, and I left the meeting, and I'll be honest, uh, we are being taken advantage of by virtually every one of those countries very, very seriously. And we're being taken advantage of on trade. It really wasn't rocky when I left. It was great. In fact, I spoke to Prime Minister Abiy. It was great when I left. I spoke to him just recently. I just told him about what, what had happened. And he said, it's amazing because you left. It was like, fine. I negotiated a different kind of a deal than they wanted. But I was okay with it, I thought. And then I, I saw what took place at this news conference. I said, that is not really what happened. So does this make you want to sit down with Vladimir Putin? No, but the question was asked by a reporter. It used to be the G8, Russia was included. And about four or five years ago, they expelled Russia. And a reporter asked me, do you think you'd be better off with Russia? I said, absolutely. You know, we spend probably 25% of our time talking about Russia. And I said to myself, wouldn't it be better if they were here? Now, I'm not for Russia. I'm for the United States. But as an example, if Vladimir Putin were sitting next to me at a table instead of one of the others, and we were having dinner the other night in Canada, I could say, would you do me a favor? Would you get out of Syria? Would you do me a favor? Would you get out of the Ukraine? Get out of Ukraine. You shouldn't be there. Just come on. Get. Now, I think I'd probably have a good relationship with them. Or I'd be able to talk to them better than if you call somebody on a telephone and talk. If I'm sitting like I was with the others, for instance, the new uh, Prime Minister of Italy, he is a great guy. We had a great relationship. He agrees with me on Putin, by the way, I have to tell you. But this wasn't uh, anything that was up for a vote. This was a reporter asking a question. I said, yeah, I think you're better off as a G8 better than a G7. And a lot of people agree with me. But I, I will tell you, as an example, if, if he were at that meeting, uh, I could ask him to do things that are good for the world, that are good for our country, that are good despite, for him. Despite all that he's look, done to us, you think he's going to... Yeah, but he didn't... I, I'm, not, I'm not sticking up for anybody. I'm just saying this. He didn't respect our leadership previously. He walked all over them. Look what he did to Obama with Crimea. He took Crimea. He took... Ukraine, he, I mean, sections of Ukraine. Which is why he got kicked out of the G8. No, I know, but he didn't respect our leadership. He didn't respect it. And so, but this wasn't me. You know, people say, well, look what he did. He did it to Obama. Obama should not have allowed that to happen. Even with the voter stuff, supposedly the FBI went to Obama. They told him about it. He didn't do anything about it. Do you think the North Korea, this few days here, has changed the dynamic? in the midterm elections. And today, where do you think the midterm elections in your head are? So, Brett, I saw on your show, and I've seen uh, 120 days ago, we were down 16 points. Now I see Reuters has us up two, and another one was up six, and one was down three. Um, I think it's a whole different ballgame. I think the economy is so good. I think the tax cuts have been incredible, far greater than even I thought they'd be. Uh, the regulation cuts have been great. I mean, I've done more in 500 days than any president has ever done in their first 500 days. There's nobody close, and that's not, that's a lot of people saying that. It's people that would rather not say it are saying it. And I really think that we're going to do very good. Now, history is against me because history, for whatever reason, you win the election and then you lose lots of seats. I think we're going to do very well. I really do. I think the economy is doing so well. We're doing so well as a nation. I think we're going to surprise people. And if you look at the numbers and if you look at the kind of turnouts, like Texas, how many people showed up to vote, as an example, how many Republicans showed up to vote, uh, people were very surprised. Mr. President, your people are uh, a little tired because they can't hang with yeah, you right. 26 hours. So we're going to wrap oh, it up there. Up. I'm very impressed because we're holding up Air Force One for you. I know. Thank That's you, pretty sir. Good. That's a big plane Thank to be you holding the time. Up. Thank you very much. Thank appreciate you very it. much, Brett. Appreciate it. We appreciate the time. And, Mr. President, you're welcome back anytime on Special Report.